Greetings everyone, and welcome to Back to Ashes. My name is Phoenix. If this is your first time here, or you have been sitting in the back row, please consider subscribing to the channel and make sure you turn your notification bell to all, that way you know every time I upload. With all of that being said, it is time to go back to ashes. For once we arise from the ashes, we are a bigger, brighter, stronger, and a happier person in the morning. Sit back, relax, kick back, grab a snack, or tuck in and get warm, and prepare for your dose of vocal melatonin entitled True Crazy X Stories. Right after this intro, an ad will play. I'll read the first story an ad will play, and after that, there will be no more ads within this video. Disclaimer. This video is for educational and entertainment purposes. My ex, JJ, was a creep. I was with him for 19 months. This happened around two months into the relationship, just as he started to get controlling, and it truly terrified me. It was 2 a.m. and I was in bed. I have super bad insomnia, so I was just listening to YouTube and scrolling through Reddit, not expecting to sleep for at least a couple of hours, when I heard a tap, tap, tap on my window. I assumed it was my cat, so I called her name because she always meowed when she heard her name. It was silent, and then tap, tap, tap. I turned my YouTube right down and called my cat again. I heard her meow in the bathroom and panicked. It wasn't her outside my window. Outside my window is the roof of an extension that was built. It slopes up to my window and can easily be climbed onto via my neighbor's wood shed. At that point, I know there was someone out there, but I was too scared to look. I sent JJ a message about it, but he was asleep, so it sent but didn't deliver. The tapping kept happening. Roughly every 20 minutes, there would be a tap, 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 and then silent. It continued for about 45 minutes while I lay in bed just listening. I felt like I was stuck to my bed, like if I came out from under the quilt, then they would somehow get me. After an hour, I realized it had stopped completely. I pulled myself up from my bed and went to the kitchen, where I could see the roof, and I saw a pair of legs dangling over the edge, illuminated by a torch. I decided to give up with my room, and I slept on the sofa with my cat that night. At least whoever it was would know where I was. Next thing I know, I'm waking up to my alarm. I go to turn it off and notice that I have Snapchats from JJ, which is odd but not unheard of. They're from around 3.30 a.m., so probably just after I fell asleep. I opened the snaps and my stomach dropped. It was a photo of my bedroom window from the outside. Then one of the legs dangling in my garden and then one of me sleeping on the sofa, taken through the kitchen window. I messaged him, asking what the fuck he was doing. I got a reply saying he'd come to check on me and chase the guy off from my house. At that point, he had me convinced he could do no wrong, and if I opposed him, I was scared about what might happen, so I just left it at that. From then on, it happened a couple more nights, and every time... I just try to ignore it, but the joy of hindsight I know shouldn't have. I should have told someone or broken up with him, but I was too scared of what he might do. I have a lot of stories about my ex. I might write them down some more. I've been considering putting it in a book somewhere, but I'm not sure. Thank you for listening to my story. Please keep yourself safe. I am in a D&D game with my friends, just moved and he invited a lot of his old friends and his D&D party to his new house. He is 22 and most of us in the group are 21 to 25, with only one being 20. Well, our DM is kind of well known in his college for being eccentric, so when me and my boyfriend, known a girl that went to our college, 
whom was equally as eccentric, but had a lot of things going wrong in her life. So, we know DM was cool, with bringing more people, so we didn't ask. The plan was to attempt to set the two of them up together, because they just seemed like they would get along. And we were going to attempt to surprise our DM by setting him up with a blind date at his own party. Me and my boyfriend were super excited because our DM had recently broke up with a girl. We honestly thought he was making her up because of this incident. And the day of the party, we picked up the girl. We will call her Courtney. When we showed up, we were late because Courtney needed to make sure she had everything before she left. When we showed up, she said she was a little nervous going in and would be after she calmed down. I offered to stay with her, but she insisted me and my boyfriend go in and we take our gift. We go in and give DM his gift and we're attempting to keep Courtney a secret because we said we brought him another gift. Well, it turned out that gift was unfortunately his most insane and petty ex whom said she'd known him for a little bit and would like to know him better. We were in the party for about 30 minutes playing Super Smash Brothers before my boyfriend decided to check on Courtney and said he was going to shoot down to the store for some beer. DM doesn't drink, so he had no alcohol in his house. He walks out, then spins around. Now I am playing, and he grabs me and whispers, Amy, we need to talk. Can it wait? It is halfway through. It cannot wait. At this time, I hand off my controller to someone else and go outside. Courtney was not in our vehicle, and our DM's truck was keyed with obscenities, and his tires had been slashed. It was at this point I was panicking because we were an accessory to this, and after me and my boyfriend debating running, leaving, and unsaid or telling DM, we finally did the right thing. We went back inside, sat down on the couch, and waited for the courage to talk to DM, but mostly for someone else to see it. At this point, me and my boyfriend were shaking, and other people asked, and I didn't do well when I'm scared. I spill it, and soon after, DM walks outside with a flashlight, and then comes back and pulls out his cell phone, calling the police. Me and my boyfriend are sitting, holding each other's hands, scared to death, and DM, whose face might whose face might as well have been on a fire skull of a honey badger, looking at us and began to interrogate us before the police showed up. Why the fuck did you bring her along? Courtney said she just wanted to know you better. Courtney was that insane bitch that was lying to me and my family, so she wouldn't have to pay for anything. It was at this time we learned of other things she did, the DM highlighting about how her father, whom was dying of liver cancer, was a lie, and she was lying to me and some of our other friends at college for attention. How are we supposed to know? Sit there while I wait outside and decide if I'm going to flay both of you. Well, the police did show up, and everyone was questioned. Me and my boyfriend gave up all the information we had, and we did apologize profusely to DM, who, while being madder than Lucifer himself about his frozen ball sack at us, still led us into his games and eventually may forgive us. I am unaware if any charges were pressed on Courtney because I did still see her at college, and whenever I go to confront her, she acts like I don't know her, and some of our friends have attempted to pursue my boyfriend, and others said that it wasn't actually I, Dio, who trashed his truck because I was jealous of her. Okay, let me start off by saying that I am not a street smart person, or I wasn't 
back several years ago when this occurred. I've always been pretty naive and trusting. Sadly, which has led me in some pretty crappy situations. But this one was by far the scariest. So, I had just recently gone through a really, really shitty, bitter, horrible breakup with my boyfriend and found myself living alone after he packed his shit and left. I didn't really know many people in the area and so tended to turn to the internet to pass the time. Long story short, I started chatting with a guy, let's call him John, and we started hitting it off. And it turned out he lived really really close to me and by really near I mean like possibly a half hour walk away so we decided to meet up the next day and see how it went I phoned my friend let's call her Anne Anne is definitely wiser and more cynical than I and told her what the plan was she insisted she come with me as I didn't know this guy he could be an ex-murderer blah 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 so the next day, Anne and I met with John at around lunchtime in a local pub. It was midsummer, so we sat outside in the beer garden. It was pretty busy despite it being lunchtime, and this place was right next to a busy road, so there was nothing to worry about, right? Well, we got some food and beer, and we all start chatting, and it's going pretty well. We are all hitting it off and having a good laugh. We were taking turns to go to the bar to get around. I don't know if this is a term outside of England. When one person buys a drink for the whole group, then later the next person goes and does the same. So on and so on. So the day is turning into the afternoon, which is turning into evening. The pub is filling up and we barely noticed the time going by as we were all hanging out having a good time and were filled with five or six beers by this point. So we are getting pretty tipsy. So John goes to the bar to get his round and the next thing I know, I'm waking up the next morning in my own bed. My face is hurting and there is blood all over my sheets. I started freaking out at this point because I have literally no recollection of what the hell happened between about 8 p.m. and waking up the next day. I don't know where the blood was coming from and I don't know why I'm hurting. So tentatively, I get up and take a look in the mirror. Now my face is an absolute mess. I look like I've been in a fight and lost badly. I have a black eye, split lip, half of my face is just scraped and bruised. I felt sick. I was totally godsmacked. What in the hell happened? So I open my bedroom door to go to the bathroom when I see out of the corner of my eye, John laying naked on my sofa. Now at this point, I'm just losing my mind. I start yelling at him like crazy, demanding he tell me what the fuck was going on. He eventually calms me down and explains to me that I got out of my mind wasted the night before and I was embarrassing myself, slurring and stumbling all over the place. And eventually, I fell over a picnic bench and hit my head pretty hard. Apparently, I was bleeding and refusing help from anyone so he called a cab and brought me home like the absolute knight in shining armor that he is i didn't remember any of this not one single moment i had a million questions but at the same time i was utterly speechless i know i've had a few to drink but it was no more than an average person would consume at a out in a club and I had had many of those. Was it possible that I just had one too many? I guess so. What other reason was there? I just looked at John with my mouth open. My head was absolutely pounding and eventually managed to muster. I'm going to be sick. So John looked after me that morning. 
He peppered the day with the odd tell of dumb things I've done the night before and how I must be grateful because anything could have happened to me and I never would have got back without him. I ate and got dressed and by that afternoon I was feeling much better. So he said he wanted to take me to his house and make me dinner so we could resume our date. You know, from the point when I ruined it by getting too drunk and blacking out. So I said, yeah, sure. It was nice of him to still want to hang out with me after all. Like I said, I am a naive twat. I really don't have much situational awareness at all. So we get to his house pretty late in the afternoon. But when I say house, he lived in a static caravan. In a caravan park, I mean, it was nice enough inside, but I couldn't help but get a really creepy vibe from it. It was tiny. The layout was, you open the front door into the living room. Then, further in, you have the kitchen and dining area. Then, through the back is a tiny hall. You have two small bedrooms and one small bathroom. And then there's a back door in the main bedroom. Now I'm sitting in the dining area while he's cooking, and we are just generally making chit-chat. I'm feeling pretty awkward now, because I can still remember absolutely nothing of the night before, so it feels a little like there's already been a power shift. Like he knows more about me than I'm aware of, and it's really uncomfortable. I decide I would eat his food, then politely excuse myself home. I didn't know what I was thinking coming here in the first place. I'm a pretty go-with-the-flow type of person, but even I had started thinking, what am I even doing here? Just then, he asks how I'm feeling, and as I'm deep in thought, I don't even think about my reply. I feel like I've been drugged, I said distractedly. Well... At this point, he just completely flips the fuck out. I mean, he's just going insane, saying what I'm accusing him of, and how dare I accuse him of certain things, and I can't prove it, and I'm just trying to cause all sorts of problems for him, and he's on parole, so I'm basically sending him back to jail with my lies. I had no idea at all that he was on parole. He would later tell me in his insane rambling texting sessions that he was arrested for domestic assault. Oh, great. He starts literally getting stuff off the kitchen sides and just starts smashing them, throwing plates against the wall, pull the toaster out of its socket, and smash that on the floor. Just absolutely having a complete meltdown whilst I'm sitting at this tiny caravan dining table like five feet away, just thinking, what the fuck is even happening right now? I moved to stand up and tell him I think I had better go home, when he suddenly lunges at me and shoves me as hard as he can, and I'm on my knees, and he's laying elbows into me, telling me I am not going anywhere. He's between me and the front door at this point, and I can't see any escape route. So I turned heel and just run through the corridor with him chasing just inches behind me. I dive in the nearest door and slam it shut and sit with my back to it so he can't get in. I'm in the tiny spare room and there's no window that opens. I'm trapped here. He's outside, pounding at the door and calling me every vile curse word in his vocabulary. I yell at him to go away and please stop the banging. I can hear him leave for a few minutes, then all of a sudden, boom, boom, boom. He's really trying to break the door down. I'm absolutely terrified at this point and pushing with all of my weight back against the door as if my life depended on it, which I guess it did. Really, the thumping carries on for what sounded like forever. Then I guess he got tired or something. And I heard him go into the living room and start shuffling around. I still stayed backed against that door, 
sobbing for at least another hour. Eventually, I hear the TV come on. He's actually sitting, chilling, watching some TV like nothing, whilst he's basically got a hostage cowering in his spare bedroom. I felt like a flick of anger and adrenaline at this point, and I ever so slowly and quietly open the door and peek out. The hull is in darkness, and the door to the living room was shut. I'm alone, but I have to walk past him to get to the front door. I'm desperately thinking of a way I can go out when I remembered the back door. I creep over to it as silently as I could and prayed that it was unlocked. It was. I silently thanked every single god I could think of and crept out shutting the door silently behind me. I crept down the steps and then just ran. Just ran and ran, sobbing and delirious and so fucking utterly confused. I had no idea where I was. It was pitch black, and I had never been in this part of the town before. I ran into the nearest payphone and used the change in my pocket to call my friends to come pick me up. My bag and my purse were still in John's caravan, although, with some other personal possessions I just abandoned. My friend drove me home, and I sobbed the whole way. I never told him what had exactly happened and he never asked. I just got home and went to bed and cried myself to sleep. The next morning I wake up and find my phone that I left at home has about 50 text messages on it, mostly from John, telling me he's going to control bomb my house and kill my family, and if he ever saw me in the street, he would stab me to death and he'd happily go to jail. It meant I was dead. I deleted them all. I was scared out of my mind and I just wanted to be over this whole ordeal and to forget about him. I would get crazy rambling texts from him, one moment threatening to kill me and the next moment telling me he loves me and sorry. I deleted every single one as soon as I received it. They gradually got less frequent and I changed my number not long after and didn't hear from him again. I got in contact with Anne uh, a while later. Turns out she has no memory from about 8 p.m. that night, and her boyfriend had an incoherent voice message from her, just babbling and screaming and crying. He picked her up, wandering bewildered around a nearby a housing estate. I know we should have gone to the police. I know I should have told somebody. I know there is a million things I could have done, but I just wanted to be over. It was the surrealest thing that had ever happened to me, and I still sometimes think back to it and wonder if it really happened, because it just drove me insane. So, crazy psycho online date dude, let's never ever meet again. I'd been sent to Korea for my university a few years ago. They told me for my major I had to go somewhere in Asia, and my friend had really talked up Korea for a bit. I knew nothing about it, but I decided what the hell, and I embarked on a semester-long trip. I had only had one serious boyfriend in my life, who I had broken up with a few months prior. I also don't enjoy one-night stands and wasn't digging the dudes at the club in Seoul, but I still wanted to have some sort of romantic experience, I suppose. So my friend recommended I use this dating app to meet English-speaking Koreans. That way I could meet someone and experience the actual dating culture. I thought, I'm young, so why not? I was just so eager to have new experiences. Maybe it sounds dumb to try dating in a foreign country, but it worked out for me eventually. Just not the first date. 
I met him on a dating app after being in Seoul for about three weeks. Let's just call him Tim. I still don't know the culture or city very well, and was a bit naive about everything. He eagerly wanted to meet for a date after talking to me, and he seemed really nice. I should have asked more questions, and I should have noticed that he was not giving me many details about himself. Tim was a guy, a bit older than me, but claimed he was a college student. I assumed he'd done his military time, all men in Korea have to, and returned to school. We talked for a little while and decided to meet for a tea date near the school I went to. He wanted to come to my dorm originally to pick me up, but I live in an all-women's dorm and I didn't want him to know exactly where I live since we were still strangers. So instead, I insisted we meet at the main town center near the subway. He really didn't like this idea, which looking back was a big red flag, but eventually I insisted. The night of the date, I waited an hour for this guy. He was very late. Tim weirdly claimed he just wanted to make me wait. I thought he was kidding and messaged him a laughing emoji, assuming he was just lost. When he finally arrived, he was much smaller than I thought, but a man's height has never been something I care much about. He was also quite thin. Maybe I let my guard down because I didn't see him as physically threatening to me, which was a mistake in the end. Right off the bat, he was way too touchy with me and breathed creepy and heavy. I was so off-put with his demeanor. I'm usually very tolerant with different personality types, but this was very odd to me. I'd been told that Korean men would be polite and not so touchy on the first date. He was also dressed oddly like in business attire for a date but I thought that maybe it's just a Korean thing. Again, I was dumb and knew jack shit about the culture. Then the first thing he said to me was, you're not as white as I thought you were. I thought this was a translation error, but his English was near perfect. So I asked for clarification and he said what he meant. I thought you would be more white. Your skin is darker than I thought, and your eyes aren't as green. Are you European? Now, I officially weirded out. First of all, I'm pretty much as white as you can get. I'm Irish and Scandinavian, so white as hell, basically. So for the fact he thought I could have possibly been any whiter was funny. And why did he care in the first place anyway? Why does my skin color matter to this guy, and why is he bringing it up? He said about three weeks on the date how he wished I had greener eyes, and every time I would reply, well maybe my online photo makes me look even brighter, and brushed it off as him being nervous and trying to start a conversation. Isn't it funny the dumb excuses you make for people when you're panicked? When we arrived at the tea place, I tried to order a basic raspberry tea, and he stopped me and told me I have to have this special tea. I thought it was weird he wanted to choose my tea for me, but in my head I brushed it off yet again. He really insisted I drink only this tea type, and I just agree. These small details become weirder later. After tea, he asked if he could look around my school. It was dark, but the school was very well lit, so I agreed. And the whole time we walked around, he would randomly stop and grab me for a long hug. At first, I let it happen, and then I stopped him. And he just kept trying. He kept grabbing me and breathing hard into my neck. It was so awkward. He also would not tell me any personal details about himself. I ask so many questions, desperately trying to distract from all the awkward grabbing and to try to get to know him. But he would never tell me anything. He even said at one point, I'm a mysterious man, like a movie line. He also said something like, 
You look so much like my favorite movie character. And I asked who, but he said that I would have to figure it out on my own. Finally, he said, I want to go to a dark area. And in my head, I screamed, hell no. At this point, I wanted this day to be over. Now, as fast as it could happen. He somehow knew there was a wooded area behind my campus, and he said we should go there. I said no, and then I wanted to stay near the main campus in town, but he kept pushing. Finally, he grabbed my arm and started dragging me there. He said, I can't let anyone see, and I started to panic. I finally ripped my arm away and just demanded we leave and go back to the main road immediately. Looking back, I don't know why I didn't ask for help or get angry. Maybe I was scared, but I just began to book it back to the main road and he followed. We ended up in front of a hospital near the center of town and I told him it was time for him to go. I made some excuse and he was pleading with me to stay. I told him we can meet the next day in which I was lying to him, and I would message him. I just wanted to get away at this point. I was pretending it was all okay, just so he would leave. Suddenly, I think he's leaning in to kiss me, and I immediately thought, oh God, mm -mm, mm -mm, no. But it was so much worse. Instead, I feel a pain in my face. It takes me a second to realize he was biting my face. It was just like a dog. I had never felt the sensation before. He leaned his head sideways and bit me on my nose and cheek as hard as he could. I screamed and pushed him away from me. His face looked really freaky and I barely had time to react in words. Instead, I ran up the sidewalk until I saw a convenience store on the right. I ran to the back of the store and bent down and started to cry. The man who owned the store started to yell at me, but I couldn't explain my situation. I just begged him in English to let me stay. I ended up having to buy a popsicle to stick around. God, I wished I had learned some Korean by then. I guess Tim didn't follow me. I peered outside the store and didn't see him. I texted a friend and waited for them to get me to take me back to my dorm. On the way, I messaged Tim and basically told him to stay away from me. I told him he was a creep, that he should not bite women, and something along the lines of me calling the police, and then I blocked him. I was scared to walk around my school area after that. I was so afraid he would find me, and somehow I am also thankful I never let him pick me up at my dorm. I called my mom to tell her what happened when suddenly she said, wait, what did he ask you? She then put some details together and realized all of these weird things had to do with the Fifty Shades of Grey books. At first I thought she was just being silly and overthinking a bad date. I thought she was joking, but oh God, she was right. She had recently seen the movie or read the book of something and knew all the details. The eye color and the way he dressed and the tea he made me drink and the random lines he said. It all matches the books and movies. For his dirty little fantasy, ugh. My mom thinks he picked me because I look like the girl in that movie to him. It explains why he was so fixated on my appearance. And his whole thing was the biting and trying to dominate me. Even if it wasn't his intention, I later learned that there are some few creeps who seek out foreign girls to dominate and have sex with like a prize. They call it riding the white horse or something along those lines. On a happier note, this bad experience didn't stop me. I eventually met someone else in Korea and we ended up falling in love. We even did the whole long distance thing 
and now I'm living in Korea, studying and working, hoping to marry very soon. So I guess I didn't let the bad, creepy guys stop my life. As for Tim, let's not meet. It's been years, but I will kick your ass if I see you. And I won't have to bite you. I haven't told this story to anyone, but here it goes. My best friend and I, both around 16 to 17 at this time, went to the mall near her house and were walking around normal stores. We would check stuff out. We saw a cute guy, had to be like 18 or 19, but didn't know how to approach him since we were social outcasts. He must have noticed because he came over to talk to us. After a month or so, I started dating him for about five months or so, and am introduced to pot and mushrooms. A few weeks to a month in the relationship, he tells me about a girlfriend he had back in Tennessee that cheated on him when he moved down south. He told me he knew the Mexican mafia in great detail, how he wanted to kidnap both his ex and the guy she cheated on him with, and their families, and slowly torture and kill them. I thought he was joking until he got into the lengthy details of injecting acid into veins and violent beatings and body disposal. My parents picked me up after that, and not telling them what I had learned, I silently cried in the back of the car. He shows me his sword and knife collection shortly before I join a D&D group. That's hosted at a store in the mall I live next to. After I join, he becomes very upset and jealous and went as far as showing up during a session I was not present for and threatened them with some of his knives. I, of course, apologized to my group since I knew every one of them from my friend group at school. Not much later, he thinks I'm pregnant and shows me a case from the FBI then included black gloves with weighted knuckles just in case he needed a forced miscarriage by beating me. I went to my best friend's house since she lived just down the street. Her entire household of maybe 12 or so was waiting for me outside and her stepbrothers had guns at the ready. We talked him down and he should look to get me a morning bill. I don't remember what caused this, but at some point I sent him a lengthy message of, I'm sorry, and he made me bow to him the next time I saw him, and say it as many times as I wrote it. He also threw something I gave him into the street and kept running after it, picking it up, running back to me, just to throw it all again. I used to take the light rail every weekend to see him, since it was right next to my school and ended right down the street from him. He once fell asleep while I was writing it and wouldn't answer his home or cell phone. I had to walk like two to three miles in the Arizona sun during midsummer to get him since he was closer than my friend. After that, I started going to his house less and hanging out with my friends closer to me at home. He called me one day while I was hanging out with someone who shared the name of one of my D&D mates and blew up. We basically ended the relationship right over the phone and I hung up on him. I refused to answer his calls as well since I didn't have to deal with any immediate repercussions. He wound up apologizing and attempted to win me back. I refused and he started threatening driving into my house. I don't remember having any physical or even visual interactions with them since then. I don't think I would have been able to leave him if we didn't have an issue over the phone. I'm terrified of what would have happened if I managed to try to break up with him in person. Of course, if I had gotten married, he mentioned while trying to win me back that he was going to ask to marry me. I had other piece of shit boyfriends a few years later for about a year and it 
cause additional mental trauma. I don't want to go into that much detail, really, but he would make me watch him punch himself in the head or bang his head against the wall. It was as if he was punishing someone else with how much he put into it. Both of these men could have easily done something terribly worse if the relationship had not ended. I refused to date anyone for about five years after this last relationship. I wanted someone who was... I wanted someone who I connected with and him me and didn't change after we started getting physical. My boyfriend of the last two and a half years is aware of some of these details and is very understanding as to why I shut down during certain situations. He'd, he's been trying to help me soon. Uh, he's been trying to help me open up a bit since I only ever had one other normal relationship and hadn't had any other person care for my feelings and opinions for a long time. He can tell when something is wrong and will keep asking me until I tell him since he knows I still shut down but want to open up to him. In the time I have been with him, I have found myself crying with him beside me because I can't believe I have found someone so sweet to me. It happened quite often at first, the crying that is, but has since slowed down. Still happens, though, since he's been with me through so much. Oh, yeah, one more thing. I just remembered this the other day while talking with my friend, but my ex once threatened to shit himself because we were at Glendale Lights or something similar, and there was a country playing. I told him to deal with it because I was originally going with just my friend, and he wanted to tag along. No shitting occurred. But, good God, I would have loved it if he had stayed home. He had a car that he could remove the keys while driving it, and he did this constantly to make passengers nervous. This is a story that happened when I was in high school. I'm telling everyone this in hopes that it becomes a kind of cautionary tale to another insecure young person who meets their people online. When I was 16 years old, I was very insecure with myself. I had a hard time making friends and I was basically invisible to boys. I made a lot of friends online in chat rooms. Mind you, this was in the early 2000s. It was during the summer, and I was staying with my sister to watch her kids because she broke her foot at a carnival, and my two nieces and nephew were a huge handful for her. So, I got to stay up all night and use the computer. I was pretty lonely because I just moved from my old high school following the divorce of my mom and stepdad, and couldn't really hang out with my friends for a while because of this whole situation. I talked to a few guys, even video chatted a few times, but it was all pretty innocent until I met a guy from California. He wouldn't tell me his age and would not even send me a picture, but I got the impression that he was an adult because he told me he had his own apartment. He claimed his camera was broken. That sounds totally legit, right? He also tried to talk me into coming out to visit him. He told me he would get me a ticket and we could meet. He told me I would have the time of my life, that we could do things together. He seemed excited about the fact that I've never been with anyone before. Anyway, after a week, he convinces me to lift my shirt so he can see me. It took a lot of convincing. He was saying nice things like, Come on, it's only me. Stupidly, I gave in. I didn't really think much about it afterwards, but I never did it again. I continued to talk to him, but when summer was winding down, my sister didn't need my help anymore, so I wasn't at her house or able to use her computer. 
One day, about two weeks before school started back up, my best friend Amanda called me and said, Hey, so I have a question for you. Why am I looking at a picture of your tits right now? I was completely floored. For a while, I didn't know what in the world she was talking about. I didn't even know what to say. I could only ask what she meant, and she told me that some random guy sent her an attachment, and when she opened it, it was me. The guy's screen name was the guy I had been talking to. She had also gotten calls from some other people we were friends with because they had also gotten the picture. Apparently, this complete motherfucker had hacked me. He got my friends list. My fucking neighbor got the picture. I know because he approached me about it. He was really nice and understanding about the situation. He had a sister about my age and felt really protective of me. But oh my God, I was so embarrassed. I begged him not to tell my mom, which he didn't. Amanda had to get into her parents' email profiles because he had also hacked her, listed, and somehow sent it to everyone on her list. My parents both had emails with the attachment of the picture. They never got the pictures and never found out. We were able to keep it pretty quiet. The only people who knew were my peers. I eventually got online and found about a hundred messages from him. I finally messaged him back and asked him why, and he said it was because I hadn't returned his messages. He got mad at me because I stopped talking to him. I told him he had ruined my life, and all he had to say was, <laughs> sorry before he blocked me. He didn't contact me anymore and he didn't send out the picture anymore. But as far as I knew, about 20 or 30 kids I had gone to school with had gotten the picture. I was glad that I didn't go to that school anymore. But every time I visited and went out around town and saw people I had gone to school with, I knew that they knew. They would point and laugh I was never more glad that I didn't have a computer at home. I didn't even use my AIM profile when I visited Amanda's or my sister's house. To the adult man who tried to completely ruin my life when I was still in high school, because you felt that I had rejected you, I hope that you get caught somehow, and I hope nobody else ever fell for your bullshit. I hope you went to prison and had all of those things that you wanted to do to me done to you. I hope to God we never, ever meet again. Before I tell you this, let me state that this happened to me years ago. My mom and I were both far away from the creepazoid, and we will never ever see him again. It happened back in 2011, maybe 2012. My mom had recently broke up with a guy who I thought was someone who could be a better father than my actual one, but he broke it off with mom and moved away. At the time, it was very heartbreaking, but my grandmother had the genius idea of hooking my mom up with this guy when the relationship with that last one ended. This man named Bobby was, well, a redneck. And don't get me wrong, rednecks, hillbillies, and the like can actually be really kindly and hardworking people. Bobby wasn't, though. Bobby was cruel, stupid, lazy, an alcoholic, and an all-around creep. I could not trust him, no matter how many times Mom tried to get me to see the good in this asshole. He was a racist toward a man who was just trying to make a living as a pizza delivery driver. This poor guy is of Middle Eastern descent, and Bobby berated and yelled at this guy, shouting, Go back to your own damn country. How did this upstanding man defend his racist behavior by stating his cousin 
was killed whilst in the military, and that's why he acted like a prick. In the words of one of my close friends, your cousin died protecting that Middle Eastern man's right as a U.S. citizen as well. Another thing Bobby had done was that during my 19th birthday party, he overheard me talking to my friends about my sexuality. I'm pan for the record. And after he demanded I kiss one of my friends to prove it, he went on and on about how sinful I am and that the Bible says this, that, and the other thing. On top of that, earlier, one of my friends, who was 15 at the time, had dealt with Bobby leering at her dancing as if she were a stripper at a strip club. It took my mom a while to be rid of him, and it took them fighting and him calling her a whore because she was a teen mom. My mom was 14 when she had me, to kick this creep out of the house. This guy made me angry and afraid and caused a rift between mom and I. We've repaired our relationship somewhat, but Bobby did his damage. The last time I've heard from him is when an ex of my uncle had a run-in with Bobby, and he asked about his daughter's location. Confused, the ex inquired who he was talking about, and he replied with my name. My uncle's ex-girlfriend flat out said, She's not your daughter, and it's none of your business. To Bobby, if there is an off chance that you read this, you are computer illiterate anyway. I doubt you would. I am not your daughter. You are a racist, disgusting pig that took advantage of my mother's loneliness. And I hope we never see your face again, unless it's behind bars. And that, dear listeners, brings a close to these true crazy X stories. Before I go any further, I would like to give a very special shout out to the elite members of Back to Ashes. Stephanie McLaren, Tammy Slayton, Mrs. Innerscare, Chrissy Elias, Sugared Spike, Tina Mead, Cindy, Amy Klimko, Anita B, Dova Khaleesi, Edith Smith, Colt Stonewolf, Luz Crispin, Samantha Place, Patty's Niece, Denise Sess, Call Me Carter, Corpse Lover, and Cindy Cleveland. Thank you all so much for your continued support. If it weren't for your support, there would be no me or there wouldn't be a back to ashes. Again, thank you. If you are sleeping, I hope Slumberland is treating you comfortably. If you're awake, I hope you've enjoyed this collection. Until next time, please stay safe out there. I'll be reading to you soon. Have yourself a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening. Peace, love, and light to you all.